The Avatar tank is finally done, you guys. I'm so excited to share the final product with you. I think it turned out pretty good. I don't know, I'll let you be the judge though. The reason why this video didn't come out two or three weeks ago had to do with some logistical problems with some plant stuff, and it's not super important because it's finally done and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So, without further ado, let's go back in time. I don't even know how long, probably like a month, and let's see kind of what happened to the tank that got us finally up to the point of it being planted and all finished. Oh, and if you haven't seen the first video where we set up the hardscape, essentially built the tank, I'll have a link for it down in the description. You're probably gonna wanna check that one out first. Okay, let's start. Okay guys, so here's exactly what happened. Immediately after I finished the hardscape for the Avatar tank, I filled it up completely with water and I left it for a few days. I then drained the tank down and left it again for a couple of days. Now this ended up being a big mistake because while the tank was filled up, the pumice retained water and then when it didn't have any water in the tank to help support it, it ended up making a lot of the floating rocks droop down, okay? That wood is bendable and the amount of pressure that was on it was enough to really shift the scape. So I knew I needed to fix things here. I didn't know how I was gonna exactly do it. We'll get to that a little bit later in the video. But what I knew I wanted to start doing right now was planting the foreground of the tank. I started out by using some tissue cultures of dwarf hair grass that I had laying around. I decided to use that in the foreground of the tank. It's an obvious place for that dwarf hair grass. And I think that in the end, you know, this is gonna be a really great plant for the Avatar tank. I also ended up throwing in some Glossostigma elantaroides that I got by mistake. And I have a couple pieces of some S repins that I put in as well. It was getting a little old and I needed to use it. But I think this combination of plants in the foreground kind of grows together will end up looking pretty cool. In a tank that I did previously, you might remember it, the bonsai tree tank, I had dwarf hair grass and the glossostigma kind of working together in the same carpet and I think it ends up just looking really natural and different. I unfortunately lost the footage of me taking apart some of the old structures and repositioning them in the tank, but this is what I ended up coming up with. And ultimately, I think this layout just works a lot better. You're gonna notice that there's a little bit more woodwork, there's more of the vines placed around the stones that are floating, and really all that entailed was just gluing more of the Sangani roots around the floating structures, connecting them, creating kind of a drooping effect to make it look like they're actually vines. And so you can see I spent quite a bit of time in here going throughout all of the stones and actually connecting them with those small pieces of twisted wood. While I was doing this, I was thinking about how I was gonna plant the entire tank, but specifically the floating rocks. And I got the idea of, hey, maybe I should try something different here. So what I did was I started to drill a couple holes into some of the floating rocks, which was a really precarious thing to do and it totally could have broken the whole thing. But I ended up getting away with it. The idea behind this was that I was gonna be putting plants into those cavities that I was making. And what makes this a little different is that I wanted to try putting in some dwarf hair grass. There's no substrate in the cavity, it's just a chunk of dwarf hair grass placed in there. Now in order for this to work, the tank is definitely gonna have to have the addition of fertilizers. It was going to anyway, and we'll just see if this works out or not. Once that was done, it was time to get crazy with the moss, okay? So we have a ton of mini Christmas moss here, and this stuff ended up going all over the floating rocks, placing little patches of it on top of the rocks, on the side of the rocks, just kind of everywhere. And of course, to attach the moss, we are using gel type super glue. It's a safe thing to use. You shouldn't run into any problems with your fish or whatever you keep in the tank. To help break up color and texture, I decided to also do the same thing with some mini Pellia. This plant is not a moss, but it ends up looking very similar to one, and it's a little bit darker green. So same thing with that, just super gluing it around the moss on the floating rocks and the structures that are below those rocks as well. I also used it to cover up some of the super glue patches that ended up showing through on some of the vines and I think it ended up looking pretty cool. And just like that, after about, I'd say probably two hours of getting my hands covered in glue, the tank is done. Thank you. 
All that was left to do was fill up the tank and then get our equipment going. Here's a little tip for you. Take a mag float or something similar and place it underneath your hose while it's filling. That way you don't disrupt your substrate too much. For filtration, we're going to be using a Fluval 206 canister filter. That's the same filter that we're using on all three of the tanks down here. I really like this size of filter for a 40 gallon tank. I think it provides a decent amount of filtration. More importantly though, I think it provides a decent flow throughout the aquarium relative to the size of it. The last thing we needed to do to finish this tank up guys was set up the CO2 system. So you might remember that before I had an Aquatech set up running the two tanks next to this one and I had the ability to keep that same system and run the avatar tank on that but the last time that I was up at aquarium co-op Corey hooked me up with this co2 art regulator that he sells and he convinced me to try it out the whole co2 art manifold and how it works is pretty unique you can get your hands on these extra bubble counters that actually attach to the regulator and you can string as many of them together as you want, I think. So we have three of them here and that's gonna run our three tanks off of one CO2 tank that sits below the aquariums. It's got a solenoid, pretty standard stuff these days, but what's really cool is that the bubble counters are all down at the regulator level. So when I'm doing my fine adjusting, I can see how much CO2 is coming out of those right there and I don't have to worry about cranking the CO2 waiting for it to get to my bubble counter which is actually in the diffuser in the tank so this makes it a little bit easier you can get some Aquatech products that do the same thing but I just figured we might as well just switch over and try this one out we're gonna diffuse co2 in the tank with one of these aqua neo diffusers that Corey also sells it itself has a bubble counter in it so if you don't have one at your regulator stage or anywhere else in your system you can get a readout of roughly how much co2 is going into your tank at that point now that the tank is done all the equipment is finally on this thing it took long enough we just get to sit back and watch this tank develop. There's already a little bit of algae forming down at the substrate level and it's starting to creep its way up and that area of the tank had water in it for several weeks before we finished doing the planting. So it's no surprise there that we're gonna see problems happen there first. So I'm just gonna have to be patient and put in the time to make sure that we can stop that algae from getting out of control. Unfortunately, I have to leave for a few days to go to Aquashella, Dallas. So four days on your own tank, good luck. When we get back, we'll assess the damage, we'll see what needs to be done, and then we'll start to prepare to get some livestock in this thing. I'm really looking forward to it. So anyway, guys, I think that's gonna do it for planting the Avatar tank. There's a look at it again, flickering lights, algae and all. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you're new, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload the next one. I don't know what it's gonna be on this tank. I don't know if it's gonna be maybe adding some cool new plants that I already have that are hiding over there. If it's gonna be livestock, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.